When you first install VMware Player, this is the screen that you're going to get. Very simple. We can create a new virtual machine. We can open a virtual machine. I can upgrade to the full-blown VMware Workstation, a great program in itself that has snapshots, and I can record the screen. It's got some nice capabilities to it. Or I can run the help from here. We're going to create a brand new virtual machine. So we'll click on that. It says this is like a physical computer, and it needs an operating system. This is as if you were opening up a brand new computer and putting it on your desk that was completely blank hard drive, and it needs an operating system. Now in our case, for this exercise, I really don't need an operating system. I just want to be able to configure the BIOS of this computer. And to do that, you don't need anything on your hard drive. You're configuring the hardware of the computer in that scenario. So we don't need an installer disk, and we don't need to specify an ISO file or a disk image file from the hard drive. We'll choose this option that says, I will install the operating system later. The virtual machine will be created with a blank hard disk. That's exactly what I'd like to do. When we click Next, it says, what operating system will you install on this virtual machine? The virtual machine configures different settings based on this. We don't even care because we're not ever going to install for this exercise an operating system. Now later on, you may decide you would like to use this to be able to create virtual machines yourself. And so you may want to choose a specific operating system. In this case, I'm just going to choose the default, which is Microsoft Windows and Windows XP Professional. It says what name would we like to use for this virtual machine. Windows XP Professional sounds fine. What location would we like to put this in? We'll use the default for saving this drive. It says the what? how large do you want this disk to be? What is the disk capacity of this operating system? And it's going to store this entire operating system and everything that we're configuring for this operating system in one big file. This makes it really useful. This is another advantage of virtual machines. If you've configured a virtual machine to work perfectly on your workstation, and you would like to run that virtual machine somewhere else, it's just one big file. You copy that single file or the files making up that virtual machine to another computer. You launch it on that computer, and it runs exactly the same way that it ran on your computer. There's no hardware requirements. There's nothing special you have to do. It's very, very portable. Now in our case, we're not going to install an operating system, so I'm certainly not going to choose to allocate 40 gig for this system, maybe 0.1, because I'm never really going to install anything for this particular exercise exercise, and store the virtual disk as a single file. That sounds good since it's not going to be very large. We click Next. It says, here's your configuration. Here's where we're going to put everything and how much hard drive space and how much memory. We can customize the hardware here. But in our case, this looks fine. I'm going to click Finish. Here now, we've built a new virtual machine for Windows XP Professional. It is currently powered off, virtually powered off, of course. And it's running with 512 mega RAM. If we'd like to change any of our settings, we can go into the Edit selection and edit any of the configurations that we've already done, the size of the drive, the number of processors, is there a DVD, is there a network, all of those configurations. We're not going to change a thing. We're just going to hit Cancel. And we're going to play this virtual machine. When I do that, it brings this up into a screen. And it says VMware would like to download the following. There's a VMware Tools for Windows 2000. VMware has special tools that you can install in the operating system that makes it interoperate very well with the underlying operating system, this host operating system on my computer, which is Windows 7. Now in this case, this really gets in the way of us using the operating system that's there. Behind the scenes, it's trying to boot up. I need direct access to that because I have to hit that BIOS setting uh, key very quickly when it boots up to say, please go into the BIOS. So what I'm going to do is say, always do this and do not download for this setting. And you can see behind the scenes, it's already started up the operating system. And it says that the operating system is not found. Now if you click anywhere in this window, notice that my mouse disappeared. That's because now this local virtual machine now has the keyboard and mouse. And it says, press Alt. Control Alt to release the mouse cursor. And if I do that, you can see it changes things in here. Now the secret here is to be able to get into this machine, have access, and be able to hit the special key for the BIOS as quickly as possible. So you can restart the virtual machine from here, or under the virtual machine pull down window, you can send power and tell it to reset this machine. And then click very quickly in here. And when it boots up, there's a special key to hit. You probably saw it goodbye very quickly, which was the F2 key. So let's try that again. We'll hit the Restart VM. I'll click in here, and I'll just click the F2 key to hit Setup. And now we're in the Setup screen. 
So you have to do that very quickly. It's almost like a video game. Test your reflexes and get into the, the BIOS configuration. But you'll notice that now we are in the hardware configuration of this system. And notice that VMware uses the Phoenix BIOS setup utility. It's using Phoenix BIOS behind the scenes. So this is exactly the same BIOS that you would see on any other physical computer that was running the Phoenix BIOS. And the settings in here are very similar across many, many different BIOS manufacturers.